Hey guys, it's Christy here. Today I'm starting an all-new Sims Medieval series. Uh, if you've been watching me for a while, you probably know that I've played this game before, but if you haven't seen that series, don't worry, uh, because this one's going to be completely separate. You see, this time, though, I have a bit of a plan going into it, because people are always asking me what uh, Christy's lore is, like her backstory. Because, uh, you know, Christy isn't my actual name, that's just my persona. But Christy doesn't really have a backstory, and it's been hard for me to come up with something because she's basically just me at this point. So I thought, well, you know, Christy's a pirate, and Sims Medieval has a whole pirate-themed expansion that I've barely used, so why don't I invent some lore for Christy using Sims Medieval? But if you know anything about this game, you know that you can't choose to be a pirate as, like, a profession. But the monarch is the character necessary for the pirate storyline, so I just went ahead and made Christy the monarch. So that's right, the lore's already changed. Christy's royalty now. Who would have guessed? So we're gonna basically we're gonna write a backstory for Christy using Sims Medieval. Now there are also. I believe nine other um, hero sims you can make. Basically nine other playable characters. And so I was like, well, what do I do with those? So what I've decided uh, is that um, if any of you know, don't already know, I am writing a comic book series. It's a like modern futuristic, takes place in a different world. Uh, like, superhero slice of life series. But I thought, what if we made this Sims Medieval world like a medieval AU of the comic? So, aside from Christy, I'm going to be making medieval versions of all of my comic book characters. Uh, they will be, like, alternate reality versions, because obviously I don't want to spoil my own comic that I haven't finished writing yet, but I thought it would be a fun thing to do. So, uh, I hope you're excited for that, and let's get into it. The dust had finally settled on the construction of a grand throne room. The seeds of a glorious new kingdom had been planted, and soon a civilization would grow and cover the land for miles in all directions. The only thing Sudario needed now was a reader. What? <laughs> yeah, I guess it does need that too. The only thing Sudario needed now was a ruler, someone wise and powerful who could unite the people under the kingdom's cause. It's really funny to me that I said that because this game is a lot of reading. Building a kingdom from the ground up was no simple task. Whoever took on this incredible mission would need to secure resources, hire a staff, control a growing populace, and beat back the criminal element. My throne room is finally complete. The builders have been working hard, and the fruits of their labor are evident. I should prepare to meet with Buildmaster Augustus. A quick jaunt upstairs to the mirror should suffice. I decided to just, uh, choose the already furnished, um, room, and, uh, maybe sometime later off cam I'll change it, because, uh, I have a tendency to spend forever decorating, uh, and not actually playing the game. Although this bed is, uh, sad. <laughs> the sheets are the same color as the wood. I'm still not sure about the, um, hair that I chose. Excuse me, this is my bathroom! You can't tell me to leave- oh, he's evil? Well, this is surely gonna go great if he's evil. Can I lock this door? Oh, I guess not. Perfect, now I'm a little more focused. Staying focused will make it easier for me to complete any journey in which I fi may find myself. Speaking of which, I should seek out Buildmaster Augustus of the Builders Guild, a powerful pillar of the community, and discuss the future of Sodayo. Well, I mean, 
I don't know how to feel about him after he just came up into my room and complained that I was using my mirror and then did an evil laugh. But, sure, we'll talk to him. Um, he's still evil laughing. So, what I was gonna say is that, um, I typically- I, I don't think Kirstie's hair has ever been short. But the pirate hat only came in the short hair. Ah, the forest. Much adventure awaits me in these woods. The wildflowers here are especially beautiful. I should collect some. One never knows when wildflowers will come in handy. Uh, okay. That's these. Yeah. How many? Oh, it doesn't specify. Okay. There are all kinds of plants one can pick across the kingdom. I believe wizards, physicians, and spies use plants to make medicines and potions. Who's this guy? Well, well, a victim has come to visit my forest. You better hand over your money if you know what's good for you. A bandit dares to threaten the queen? My trusty sword can bring this brigand to justice. Yeah, fight him. Fight him. Fight him good. Think you can beat me? We'll see about that. <laughs> wow. Weak. I like that her, her armor still matches her hat. Yeah, this guy's not... This guy sucks. I wonder if, um... Because she did, uh, I did make her pretty strong in the, like, character menu. I wonder if that has any effect on, like, how well she does in this. Like, if that... I wouldn't think so. I would imagine it was just, like... Aesthetic, but... Yeah, she, she went from kicking his butt to now they just, like, kind of... Okay, finally. That took, like... They... they, they... That took so much longer than necessary, I feel like. <laughs> Triumph! Bandits could really become a problem in Sudayo, but a knight or a spy could curb that. Now I can collect wooden piece. Uh, oh. No! <laughs> That's not what I'm supposed to be doing! <laughs> I, I just- I saw the big green highlight and I was like, oh yes, fun! I'm trying to just uh, speed through this quest, kind of, so that we can get to the more exciting ones. There's always adventure waiting to be found in the forest. The wood was collected and the kingdom would soon prosper from it. Okay, but I want to- can I go on an adventure first now? This venturing sounds fun. While walking down a forest path, a squirrel wearily approached and stopped at Lady Christie's feet. It tilted its head and then dashed a short distance away before turning to look at her expectantly. Such an odd behavior for a squirrel, but on a hunch Christie decided to follow it. Eventually, the squirrel stopped at a hollow log. Reaching inside, Christy pulled out a small box with some oddities inside. Received mystic metal frap. Fra <laughs> okay. <laughs> I feel like if you told anyone this story, you would just sound like completely insane. Just like, yeah, I saw this squirrel and it like looked at me, and then I like followed it to a tree and found a piece of magic metal. Like, this sounds like something a drunk person would come up with. Okay, well that wasn't exactly the most, like, you know... Life-threatening, exciting adventure that I was hoping it was, but, uh... It was interesting. Whoops. I'll give it that. <laughs> Four times speed walking, like, is weird. Ah, my lady, can I have a word, please? It's about my work here. Okay. That's grave digging. For the people who are already alive. The, the definitely dead people that are definitely not still breathing. 
I made this joke before in my last series, but I, was, I still think it's weird. Well, my lady, I was just wondering if you would consider building a church here in the kingdom. It seems unceremonious to bury these people without a proper rite from a Jacoban or Pedrin priest. Thank you, my lady. Okay. I don't know what you're thanking me for. I haven't done anything yet. An interesting proposition. There are many things to consider when I choose what to build next. On that note, we need stone. Okay. I probably am not gonna build the church first because I already kind of have a plan of what I'm gonna do first, but, um... Uh, I will consider it, uh... Well, I can't see what your name is now. <laughs> Chrissy collected stones while venturing deep into the endless network of tunnels. Eventually, she climbed down a sheer drop into a dark abyss. At the bottom, Christy reached an underground lake. She stumbled over a small chest sitting in a puddle of water. What should Christy do? Well, Christy's adventurous, so yeah, she's gonna open it. Christy opened the lid and found a small bounty of wet coins inside. It pays to be adventurous. I've yet to find anything dangerous. <laughs> I guess this is like the tutorial quest. Maybe I shouldn't be that surprised. The village shop sells plenty of things, ingredients for cooking, armor, weapons, and many other useful items. Plus, the stock is always changing. Okay, does it specify what I need to buy? Because I... No, I can just go shopping, alright. I want a bird. That's the first thing. I, I, I'm a pirate, I have to have a parrot. Where's the parrots? I'm gonna get this just because it looks like a sword a pirate would have. And I want it. Hopefully it's better than my current sword. But I feel like probably anything is, right? Because I just started. Um, I do- I need- ooh, that's expensive. I need that, though. A lady approached Christy and then bowed. I have heard word of your arrival and in your honor have prepared two gifts to help as you build your kingdom. However, I shall only give you one of them. The gift you receive depends on your answer to this question. What virtue would you rather bring to Zudaya? Safety. As I build my kingdom, I will value the safety of my people over our offensive strength. My people are my heart. Power. The fierce strength of a kingdom is of utmost importance. A kingdom with no power is no kingdom at all. Hmm. I know for one of these you get a sword, and I just bought a sword. So I don't really want another sword. And I think it's safety? Well, I want to do the, um, the Pirates and Nobles quest line, which is a war, and war isn't exactly safety, I don't think. We're gonna go with power. Oh, it is a sword. I thought it was the other one that was a sword, but I guess I was wrong. There's a woman in town square. She pushed me in the mud and called me names. This can't be happening in Sudayo. A bully in my kingdom? I don't think so. Well... Okay. I guess, yeah, I guess I can go deal with the bully. I, I'm also kind of, like, currently starving to death, but, you know. Sure. I'm sure this is important. That must be her. I will not accept bullying in Sudayo. Some time in the stocks will teach this bully to think before she acts. Yeah, I know, you're starving, but we gotta- we have moderate things to do. What if I threaten her for money instead? <laughs> Uh, unrelated. <laughs> oh wow. Uh oh. Um. Hmm. I hope this isn't like um. I didn't know this was going to result in a fight, but now that I think about it, maybe that was uh, to be expected. <laughs> I, yeah, maybe muscle choosing muscles in the um the creatism menu actually does affect it because like I'm so much stronger than her, and I just started this game. I did it! I killed the bully. She's dead now. I stole t I, I stole fifty dollars from town bully Marie. Um. Send us stocks while you're on the ground. <laughs> you know, 
I hope I didn't break the game by doing this. Oh my goodness, look at that stare. I think she's not dead, but I think she is unconscious. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let her go home and eat, because she's like starving to death. And we'll, we'll come send her the socks in the morning. I would like to point out that one of- that Chrissy's other trait besides adventurous is good. And she just robbed somebody. <laughs> what are you- no wait wait wait, what are you making? Oh no. Why are you playing the loot in my bathroom? Okay, she's not on the ground anymore. I can um... Oh, but it's 12 p.m. I guess I should sleep. Is she just gonna stand here and wait for me to order her to go to the stocks? Because that's all she's intended for to do. She made a crappy stew when she had the ingredients for a good food in her inventory. Watching a train wreck in progress, but instead of a train, it's a medieval sim. Because, you know, they didn't have trains back then. <laughs> So she's lonely and a nervous wreck from being insecure. Okay, let's do this correct this time and send her to the socks instead of threatening her for money. Ah, it's good to be queen. Everyone has their own way of going about these problems, though. I wonder how a wizard or physician would have handled that bully. We'll never know, because this quest is for monarchs only. <laughs> oh, I also need to, like, talk to people. I should probably do that. Can we talk to Vampire Lady? Now to shame that bully. We'll make, that'll make her think twice before messing with my townspeople. Yes, but I want to talk to Vampire Lady first. Ask about health. She, she's very pale. She might be sick. Am I feeling less... Okay, I'm feeling less insecure now. Okay. She fell asleep! I took so long. Uh, well, what did I need to throw? Did it supposed to throw egg? Okay. Throw an egg at her. Oh! <laughs> Jump into pit, feed the beast. Ah, it's good to be queen. Don't mind me just getting my thumbnail. <laughs> I totally missed whatever that lady was saying, though, because I was doing this. But, in fairness, it's a really good thumbnail. I'm going to call my parrot now. Ooh. I don't know what I should name the parrot. Let's see. I like her though, she's pretty. Henceforth, this bird shall be known as. <laughs> um. I decided to name it Aqua. Uh. Pet. That's so cute. Oh. All right, send treasure hunting. Okay, it says to return to the throne room, but I I want to get that shovel while I'm thinking about it. So let's go do that first. Well, hello, good looking. It would seem a few visitors have arrived while I was out. I do believe I see a visitor who catches my eye. Well, I feel like the bard would catch her eye considering... Like, like, I mean, just in, as in stand out, not as in, like, love interest, just because of the fact that he was already in her bathroom at one point. But I think I am gonna go with the bard, because I don't really like the merchant character that much. Oh, also, can I, um, now that I have a servant, can I, before I do this, let's see, can I, I can call for food, okay. Good to know I bought all that food for nothing. 
<laughs> ah, the early blossoms of love. I can't wait to see what other handsome travelers will come to Sudayo. Perhaps I could even start a family with one of them. Now, where was I? Ah, yes, I should deliver the resources to build Master Augustus. It's not, I don't feel like it's really, you can really call it the early blossoms of love if your next thought is, I wonder what other handsome travelers will show up. Okay, let's go talk to my evil build master that's totally not going to backstab me when I have my back turned. So, take time for yourself. Well, let's... Ooh. Thick parrot on. <laughs> Once again, we are good. <laughs> I like how I'm just like, I literally just stood right next to her and did this. Oh, she enjoyed that apparently. Whoa, that sped through it. I didn't even get to see it. This was definitely. The treasure marked on the treasure map. Oh, I got a better shovel. Hey, okay, nice. Lady Christie was wandering through the forest when she heard some chanting and drumming in the distance. Making her way stealthily through the bushes, she spied a throng of tall navy blue elves dancing around a glowing white tree. Uh spy on them. It was incredible luck. The navy blue elves were most elusive and skittish of all elves. Witnessing one of their religious ceremonies was unheard of. If Lady Chrissy hid in the bushes, she might even see what happens next. Perhaps they would leave some artifact behind. Chop it down. It was a crystal blanc tree. If the old stories were correct, they only grew in dry alkaline so soils filled with mithril and magic crystals. If Chrissy were to chop it down, she could claim the treasure. Uh, I don't think that's a great idea. Let's spy on them. Uh, Lady Christie kept forth. Oh, uh, uh, okay. M a lot of things going on. Lady Christie crept forward and observed the Blue Elves' sacred ceremony around the glowing tree. After singing prayers to the spirits of their ancestors, they departed in silence and the tree grew dim. Still enchanted by the scene, Christy walked forward and hugged the tree goodbye and then turned to leave, but stubbed her toe on a small, heavy stone. Mana stones, she exclaimed, and quickly gathered up a few more. <laughs> and then, on the way home, a bear reared up before Lady Christy, roaring menacingly, ready to attack. I'm supposed to fight and kill a great bear, but I don't think this counts. Ah, whatever, we'll fight it. After a grueling fight with flying fur and flashing blades, Christy was victorious, slaying the bear. Not wanting anything to go to waste, she carved up the carcass. Christy, okay. Oh, I got a trophy! Well, that was, that was quite the adventure for sure. Now, okay, success odds high. Christy tracked down the large black forest bear to its feeding ground. Surprising the animal, she dispatched the furry hunting leather with a single blow, carving out four cho choice chunks of bear meat to take home. So how much bear meat do I have? I have nine bear meat. And a trophy. Do I just drag it? Oh my goodness, that's so scary. I expect my new visor should show up soon. Once she arrives, I will ask her for her first pieces of advice for the kingdom. Oh, look! There she is now! <laughs> How convenient! Yeah, that's totally not terrifying. <laughs> I can't believe I fought two bears in one day. Well, I guess technically fought one and just hunted down the other one, but... Uh... Let's just go to sleep. It's 1am. It's past 1am. As Lady Christie slept, the feelings of comfort and happiness began to solidify into a beautiful dream. In the distance, soft music was carried on a fragrant spring breeze, and smiling faces cheered as she approached. Christie could see a shining gold road leading towards a breathtaking paradise. In the opposite direction, the road faded into a thick mist. 
Though Christy could almost make out a dark and still bedchamber, barely visible through the fog. It appeared the dream had something to say. Lady Christy would allow herself to be swept along by the cheering throngs towards a vision of paradise. The dream seemed to be offering paradise to Lady Christy, but was this not the product of her own mind? She could seize control of the dream and take paradise. Ah. These feel like sort of the same things, but I'm gonna just say embrace joy. Lady Christy joined in the cheering crowd of familiar faces and was carried steadily towards the vision of paradise. Before Christy knew it, bliss surrounded her like a warm and secure blanket and hundreds of beautiful scenes, each filled with thousands of precious moments. With every second, a lifetime was lived in joy and cheer, each iteration greater than the last. Wait, so this is like, like, reliving different lifetimes? Dream? That's insane. Okay, and so now apparently we're having a second dream. I don't think I've ever seen two dreams in the same night in this game. A restless sleep quickly devolved into a parade of monstrosities, horrific visions, all slavering over the prone and helpless Lady Christy. No matter which way she turned, the horrors pressed ever closer. I feel like this is the... This is the this is what you get from fighting a bear. <laughs> this is this was the elf. This was the dream. This dream was the result of the elf thing. This dream was the result of the bear fight. <laughs> I'm gonna confront the horrors. Uh, Lady Christie buried her fear and turned to face the encroaching nightmares. Shouting in defiance, she struck the inky phantoms. But to no effect, their dark claws and fangs slashed painfully in every direction. Heaving with terror, Christy was overpowered and drawn down to anguish, only to awaken, shaken and covered in sweat. It would be several minutes later before she could fall, fall back into Except for she just woke up and it was daytime. Our dreams- our dreams balanced each other out because we got- we got, wow, what a great dream that was. Plus 10 focus. Yikes, I hope I don't have a dream like that again. Minus 10 focus. Wow, what a productive night's sleep. A lady, to be honest, this throne room is a bit lacking. You need to furnish it better if you're going to impress any foreign leaders or professionals. I didn't change too much because, like I said, I'm going to deal with that later, but I added uh, these two plants and I changed the torches to lanterns. Yeah, screw off. For many generations, treating it have been a central hub of commerce and trade for the region. The Antithesis of Tridney, the people of Craffle, are the makers and doers of the world. By the way, I named it Sudayo because Sudayo is the name of the city in my comic. Uh, well, my eventual comic. Scallywag! Whoa! Um, that was kind of rude. Wait, who am I fighting? I just realized I was like. How do I end up fighting the- How, how did I end up fighting the Craffle guy? I- that- that was not- I didn't tell her to do that, that just happened. I want to be friends with the Craffle people, not enemies. That being said, I'm definitely going to lose by the looks of it. Probably because my sword is heavy. Oh, <laughs> 
I just casually spit that lady's face for slapping my maid, by the way. I, that was just happening in the background. I, I was- I spaced out, because I was like... I was thinking about something else, but anyway. There are enough resources here, and the builders are ready. The only question remains, my lady. What will you build, your highness? strong queen had risen, but trying times were ahead and Chrissy's rule would be challenged more than she could possibly imagine. 